Hi everyone and welcome to my tutorial Learn to write observations of learning. Today we are going to talk about one very easy to learn form of observations, jottings. What are jottings? Jottings are brief and concise notes. So the key word here is notes. Taking during observations to capture significant moments of child's play, learning and development. They are quick and that's their advantage. They are unfiltered and they also intended to provide a snapshot of the observed event. So whatever you are writing about child interactions, child play, child's routines, child's interests, child's vocabulary or anything else like social context, uh, friendships, you will write this very briefly in real time without interrupting the flow of play routine or exploration. So win-win for us, also really time-saving. Personally, why do I like jottings? Because old Chinese proverb says, the faintest ink is more powerful than the strongest memory. For me, it worked really well. At first, I thought I have a good memory and I definitely will remember everything children did today and be able to tell um, other educators or pass it on to the parents. But I also found that sometimes I forget the little details. So, for example, uh, two children may look alike. <laughs> I know it's funny, but it's true. Or uh, you might forget who was playing with who. Or you might forget exact words of the child and they probably were very meaningful and you want to write them down. So what I started to do, I started to carry post-it notes and a little diary, even smaller than this one, with me. Uh, I had a pocket in my apron or I always have a pocket in my uh, pants where I would uh, just have a little pen and, or a pencil and this um, notebook where I will write things down. It really helps. Even if you do not carry it with you, having those breaks when you will write those jottings will be great. Recently, I discovered another great tool that helps me to make jottings easier, uh, which is using technology. So uh, everyone knows notes on iPhone or if you are using Samsung, you will have different app for that. Uh, but notes are really easy to use because you can uh, quickly make um, notes. You also can use Evernote app, which I use a lot as well for saving any information that is related to learning a development program or any thoughts and reflections that I might have. But you also might find that audio or voice recordings are beneficial, which we will Why jottings? Let's talk about the benefits of jottings as a type of written observations. Observations should be done consistently. We all know that EY left planning cycle requires us to do observations. Also, any type of assessment, if it's a formative assessment, should be done continuously. So we have gathered enough information to make a judgment about child's learning. Jottings really allow you to do it well because you are, of course, struggling with finding time to do observations as an early childhood educator or teacher. And jottings really allow us to make notes over time with ease. Second reason, observations should be done for every child in your group. So jottings also allow to cover that. While learning stories are fantastic uh, tools of observation, so as anecdotal records or writing records, uh, you might use checklists, which are slightly outdated, but sometimes required. Uh, they take time, all of them. Uh, while jottings allow us to capture even group learning sometimes in a way that uh, allows unpacking. So that's really great tool. Observations take time and they are usually time consuming, while jottings, as I said, are brief and concise and they save a lot of time. Reason number four, observations often require well-developed well -developed writing skills. 
I used to be a journalist and uh, it took a lot of time to learn how to write. So I, I remember that I practiced a lot and I, I had to submit my articles for uh, my pieces uh, for uh, editing and I would learn even from that. So the more I used to write, the better my writing would become eventually. So you need to hone this skill. But uh, a lot of early childhood students and beginning educators do not have this luxury. They are learners, so they're learning to write, and that's why the observations not often very well written, especially if you are talking about narrative observations such as learning stories. Starting with jottings seem to be a really, really good idea to start writing well. Number five, jottings are snapshots of learning. And as I said, they do show a lot of domains in one little note sometimes. Uh, they could be further unpacked. And the uh, most important thing that this process is quick. Let's talk about characteristics of jottings. If we look at Cambridge English Dictionary a definition of jottings, it is quickly written short note. So think about something that uh, you do in daily life as well. So at meetings, so meeting minutes, uh, they do not replace all the other observations because we are supposed to write observations. But personally, I find that jottings can give you a really good entrance point for lengthy observations, such as anecdote notes and learning stories. As I said, it's a step-by-step -step process that you take as an educator. So you can always uh, use jottings to support your other observations. And of course, you will have to do summative assessments while jotting cannot be a summative assessment. Jottings are, uh, by definition, short and concise. So hence, they are only supporting your uh, real observations. Yet, uh, there are characteristics of jottings that we need to consider. Number one, they are concise. Jottings are short and to the point, capturing essential details in a few words or sentences. Number two, they are unfiltered. Jottings are written without extensive analysis or interpretation, allowing educators to capture raw material or raw observations without bias. Number three, observational focus. They focus on specific actions of the child or a group of children, behaviors, exchanges of words observed during this activity. Whether it's play or learning or routine, you can focus on different aspects and you still can make these short, concise notes. In the moment, so jottings are like writing records written in uh, the present tense, and uh, they are taking as events happen, providing real-time insights into children's learning experience. I'll give you an example. When we had incursions in my early childhood center, I would sit down and watch and, of course, supervise children uh, with uh, a little a notebook where I would make notes or I will make notes in my iPad. So this would help me to make notes on how we can extend on learning that happened there, what kind of ideas children shared, and then also make observation later on and write it down. So we are observing almost always on the floor. <laughs> yes, yeah, so while we are working on feet and as well and while working directly with children. So we are not having luxury to sit down and observe like uh, researchers from university. So that's why jottings are really good to capture anything in the moment. Jottings are often objective. Yeah, so they aim to be objective. Of course, it depends on how you write them, but they are short and that's why they should be fact based. They should describe what is observed without adding any personal opinion and judgments. But this is true to any observation that you make as an early childhood educator or early childhood student. Jottings should be authentic. They aim to capture authentic moments of child's behavior, interactions, and emotions. So we are not uh, making these observations, yes, yeah, so out of the blue. We are watching, we are looking, we are noticing, and we are recording. That's the most important thing. And this tool serves it well. A little side note here. 
uh, on AR generated uh, observations. I know it's a new technology and everyone is trying to embrace it, but I don't think it is suitable for writing observations because it's just simply not present where you are with a child. You can kind of ask uh, ChatGPT to edit your data. So for example, edit your writing, which is, um, possible to do with another tool such as Grammarly, but it is uh, probably not the best to ask ChatGPT or any uh, open uh, AI other apps that they will create or apps that uh, companies create based on ChatGPT to um, uh, ask to write observations of the child simply because it is not professional and it curb the erosion of our professionalism in the future so consider that and reflect on it but writing your own um, observations will empower you as opposed to relying too much on the tool that might not be precise or might not be professional okay uh, the next characteristic of jottings is spontaneous jottings are quickly recorded to avoid disrupting the natural flow of children's play and exploration and personally i observed it many times even as a student many many years ago i remember when i was asking children questions sometimes they would look at me as if i was a bit of intruding uh, into their play and i learned eventually just to ask questions only when necessary but standing back and observing and capturing what is happening uh, is the best tactic for objective observation. So jottings can allow you to do that. Educators use jottings as a valuable tool for gathering preliminary data during observations. So what does it mean? That you are gathering information that you can unpack later on and write the anecdotal record or learning story or any other observation. So as I said, jottings uh, could be learned first because they provide you with opportunities for more in-depth analysis or descriptions later on. But it does uh, fulfill the function of gathering information. Let's say that you had an encounter with a family and they shared something important with you. For example, that the dog's name um, that child likes to play is Lucy. So I remember I would do make all these notes about children when I just started running my group with kindergarten children and sometimes I would not uh, know what they are referring to these children in their place. So one uh, boy, and that's a true story, he was talking about abuela and I'm not familiar with Spanish so I didn't know what this word means. Uh, I was thinking that it might be a name of a dog, it might be a word that I don't understand of and uh, he was saying oh, my abuela, my abuela and I was thinking that's something definitely is relevant to a family member or to um, a pet <laughs> as I thought so I didn't uh, google anything at the moment because I was working directly with children but then I made a note to learn what abuela is and it, it, whether I'm pronouncing it well so it turned out that the grandmother of this child came to pick him up and when he saw her he screamed abuela and he ran towards her so this way I learned that abuela is the the way he refers to his grandma and how, he, how we call Nona in Italian or Babushka in Russian. So that's uh, a, a was really important jotting to make because it does give us insight into child's culture, his context and th things, people that are important in his, in his life. Jotings provide educators with valuable insights into individual children's development interests and learning styles. They help us to tailor uh, interactions with children as well. They help us to plan better activities, support child's growth, learning and development. Uh, you might ask how? Uh, well, if you make a note about child played in this center, that means that they do like this particular play area. And if you have 20 children or even 10, it doesn't really matter. You make 10 or 20 notes about children's preferences. So this is uh, more uh, achievable while you are working on the floor supervising children directly than not making notes, right? Otherwise you will lose all this information. Also other educators who are relief educators or casual educators in your room or your family daycare, they can also make notes like that and 
they can uh, help you to support children's interest. At the end of the day, you are recording valuable information. Educators use jottings as a valuable tool for gathering preliminary data during observations. So what does it mean? This means that uh, we are gathering information that might help us to extend on children's learning, to analyze children's learning, to support it better, also identify any delays that we might notice and support child who may have gaps. Uh, we also learn about child's culture by making notes and we do uh, exchange these notes with other educators. We can also gather the information from the family. This has happened to me uh, when one child was talking about abuela and back then I didn't know what this means because I um, am not a Spanish speaker. So I was thinking it could be referring um, to a dog or maybe a toy or something that i'm not familiar with so i waited but i made a jotting that this child was uh, saying this word and i wanted to find out what this means and at the end of the day when his grandma came he uh, ran towards her and he said abuela abuela's here kate my abuela and this way i figured that this is uh, the name for grandmother in spanish so i had a chat with this parent and oh guardian and uh, we found a lot uh, of interesting points to discuss and i made more jottings after this conversation so they do provide us with valuable insights into individual children's development interest culture context learning styles helping us as educators to tailor interactions with children we also can tailor activities future experiences and better support child's growth learning and development now, the question is, are jottings different from anecdotal records? Yes, they are. Both jottings and anecdotal observations have unique purposes and advantages. Jottings are valuable for capturing real-time moments quickly, providing authentic snapshot of a child's interactions, actions, or exact words. Personally, I found that exact words are often lost because the way children speak sometimes it's mispronouncing words or it's the way they uh, form sentences uh, it's very important about toddlers as well the way they pronounce words and they need to capture it uh, to clarify let's say with parents what this means uh, on the other hand anecdotal observations of of a more detailed uh, and comprehensive account of child's behavior or actions and often used to um, uh, write down things uh, in a more structured way. So they are true formative observations. I write anecdotal records a lot, so it's kind of preferred style of observations because they do uh, give us uh, a completed event yeah that is written down from the beginning to the end that's so it's like a story and uh, they have a beginning middle part and end so it's it's really a complete uh, episode of play learning or routine that is important it could be also related to behavior uh, and it does give us insight into holistic understanding of child development using jottings in combination with anecdotal records or with learning stories will definitely improve the way you collect data so let's have a look at this table again and see that jottings are brief notes or snaps of learning on the spot spontaneous in the moment while anecdotal records more detailed written observations written in the past tense uh, they are more detailed that's the key and complete episodes of learning now uh, let's look at um, other things that jottings are used for number one reflection and analysis jottings provide a foundation for deeper reflection and analysis of children's behavior and interactions jottings are used for individualized learnings 
Uh, for example, educator can use Jotting to track and understand child's progress and create personalized learning plans, in our case, experience plans as well. Uh, we also can add Jotings to the portfolio or profile. Uh, we can share Jotings with families, as I said, to promote individualized learning. For example, I would make notes if child achieved some interesting milestone today. Uh, I saw a um, child, for example, writing their name for the first time, or I saw a child uh, counting to 10 and recognizing numbers. So this way, uh, the information is not lost and you jot it down. Next one, informing teaching strategies. Uh, by documenting jottings, uh, I can tailor my teaching strategies and activities to better need in, meet individual needs and interests of children. For that, I have my reflective journal uh, with me all the time. For example, I can um, state in my journal that a child is afraid of bugs. And this child may have ASD, so or autistic spectrum disorder. And uh, uh, I will uh, be, be paying attention to alle alleviating this fear and also supporting child with coping strategies. So th this also can help me to improve my group meetings or circle times. Um, uh, it may improve the way I read books because I noticed that children, let's say, lost interest after 10 minutes or the way I was running the session could be done differently. Parent communication, I already mentioned, but jottings can definitely be shared with families uh, to provide them with insights into child's experience and learning moments at school, early childhood program or family daycare. My friend who used to be a family daycare educator would send uh, pictures uh, with uh, jottings, yes, so which I call snapshots, uh, to parents throughout the day. And they were very happy with this way of uh, keeping a track of children's learning. Are there any disadvantages or limitations of jottings? Of course there are. Every observation had benefits and disadvantages or um, affordances, I would say, or limitations. So number one is lack of detail. So due to uh, being brief and concise, jottings may not capture all the interactions of or child's actions or their uh, vocabulary or the dialogues and this can lead to potential loss of important information so this happened a lot sometimes you make jottings and you're like what did i mean <laughs> so this is true uh, limited interpretation so jottings may lack uh, the interpretive elements present in, in more detailed forms of observations. For example, if you wrote anecdotal record, usually another educator can interpret it as well. But if you made a jotting, sometimes you need to add a little bit more information to help another educator to follow your lead. Okay. Uh, also, it could be subjective because jottings... Um, they're supposed to be objective as, as any kind of observation, but uh, there may be a level of subjectivity uh, in terms of how you choose to record the event or what you focus on during observations. But this is true about any kind of observation. So it depends on what lens you are using. For example, if you check my resource on um, observation guides, I talk about the Rogoff lens, which I will make a video on as well for analysis of observations. Uh, and if you choose Barbara Rogoff lens or Vygotsky theory to analyze observations, uh, this would mean that you are focusing on social interaction, social context, a language, uh, also more knowledgeable other and scaffolding and peer support. While um, if you choose Piaget developmental lens, uh, that would be a very different focus. Uh, next uh, disadvantage is limited scope. So jottings may cover a wide range of learning domains or developmental area, but they also uh, may not, right? So it depends on uh, if you made different uh, jottings covering learning holistically, um, but it's not the nature of jottings. Yeah? So we make like really um, 
brief notes and this way we can actually miss something important um uh, focusing more on milestones for example if you are using it for a distance traveled or development and growth valuation uh, or using learning stories to describe important uh, learning uh, from social point of view as i said social cultural type of observation would be a great um, addition to jottings memory recall uh, as i was saying sometimes you write something down but then you don't remember what uh, happened <laughs> especially if you didn't look at your jottings for a few weeks because you didn't have planning time or you didn't uh, make time for it because you had more urgent tasks to attend to next one is challenge in sharing sharing jottings with other educators can be uh, a little bit difficult because you need to explain the context you need to explain other intricacies and because they are brief you may not convey uh, the message fully also the handwriting is another problem if they are handwritten you will see what i mean in one of the next slides Let's have a look at examples of uh, jottings. Uh, child's name, Emma. Emma is sitting at the art table, carefully holding a paintbrush and using short strokes to create lines on the paper. She dips the brush in different colors and smiles when the colors mix. Emma says, look, it's a rainbow. She seems focused and determined to finish her painting. Typical jotting could be also a short anecdotal record, but because it's so brief, it's jotting. Next one, Liam. Liam is playing in the block area, staking blocks on uh, one on top of the other. He takes a deep breath and counts one, two, three, big tower. When uh, his tower collapses, he looks disappointed, but quickly starts building again, saying, try again. Liam is persistent and shows problem-solving skills during block play. Child's name, Aiden. Aiden is playing in the dramatic play corner, wearing a firefighter hat and holding a toy horse. He pretends to put out a fire in the play kitchen. Aiden excitedly calls out, Firefighter Aiden to the rescue. He engages in pretend play, demonstrating imaginative and expressive language. So you can see these are jottings that could be unpacked further. Uh, so they provide enough details to see a uh, child's interests. So for example, play preferences. Also, whether they say anything. Uh, is there any achievement that uh, you can see in there? Are there any dispositions as well? So it's pretty good, right? So also shows the area uh, where they played. Sample jotting, uh, as I was saying, I use um, voice recordings sometimes. So when I observe children, I can make short notes like this one. Elise is 30 months old and uh, he is, um, she actually is exploring uh, the outdoor environment. She looked closely at the garden bed and begins to pick up pieces of tin bark. She notices and then it's crawling around the garden bed and she watches as uh, the ins insect climb up the nearby fence when uh, when did you get the walks past Ellen calls out and points to the insect you have as been watching so what's wrong with this jotting so because it's an audio transcript you can see that the way it captures your voice is not perfect especially if you are like me and have an accent so i would recommend you to uh, use the tool that you can trust so and this way you wouldn't have a sample jotting like that so to improve it of course you can put it through grammarly and proofread it yourself and edit it yourself a lot of educators using story park right so and uh, what uh, you can see when you type really fast on ipad uh, that is not really made for typing this fast so you need to use a keyboard which i have for example you still need to proofread your jottings so i prefer to make notes rather than uh, making voice um, um, records or at least edit them to ensure that they're not looking like that so that's a tricky part isn't it so this is an example example, example of jotting um, that I like to do. So these are pictures, yes. Yeah? So pictures plus keywords and couple of sentences. Um, so you see here we have children's uh, pictures. We have 
uh, something that is happening. So it's an imaginative play uh, that they were engaged to play, imagine and create role scripts and ideas. We are tigers, Kate. Grr. <laughs> so this captures child's voice, moment of play. And you can unpack it further because I was there. I know what was happening. They were playing with dress ups and they put on uh, tails that I brought animal tails and they were all running around pretending to be different animals so this is a really great moment to capture because it's shared joy it's social moment of friendship and also we see a rich language and connection with educator so looking at outcomes uh, from the EYLF we can also see that it's 5.3 yep uh, when children create role scripts and uh, share their ideas. Uh, I, we also can see that I added an extension, yes, so provide children with uh, more props, like to make masks, include many animal movements, because they seem to be quite responsive to that. Okay, so uh, next one is an example of my jottings on the left in the special diary, reflective diary that I used. And you can see that this uh, type of uh, journals, I really like them. They do allow you to draw, to add pictures, to add your own little uh, pictures. At the end of the day, if you think about why we are doing observations, and there are many reasons, yes, so, but the key is that it is pedagogical documentation, which means that you collect it as a teacher to analyze children's learning, to capture and analyze children's learning, to extend it and support it better. So you use it to plan experiences that are intentional, to capture spontaneous learning and play. You also can share it with children and families, of course, but the main goal is for programming and planning. Yes. So we do need it for assessment of skills as well and so-called distance travel. So using uh, jotings uh, is a very great way to write things down uh, to share with families. You can see also that Jotings could be about routines on the left, so children are settling in, so I want to create the structure of the day, daily routines with some flexibility. You can see play spaces and jotings related to that, water and food dye, uh, cups uh, and rocks. Yes, so water play was quite popular, they're learning about volume and pouring. I could add later on who was playing there or who was more more engaged. Uh, sink or float as well, uh, available for children outside. So you can see they seem to enjoy experimenting. We will make this area permanent uh, with loose parts. Yeah, so uh, and add a book, Who Sank the Boat, to extend on concepts that I learned through this experience. Uh, you can see also a picture of an old lady who swallowed the sea and... Um, how a child is interacting with it so it's a snapshot but i could also add uh, more um, words here to kind of explain it what's happening you also can see some dates there so what's happening uh, some uh, children playing with water outside some children play with toy dogs some children uh, brought um muffins <laughs> yes and shared with other other children uh, some children like this old lady puppet yeah, so and this is great. So the jotting on the right is an example of handwritten jotting about um, a child in focus who is Logan. It's not my handwriting, so it's uh, one of my students' handwriting. So you can see the difficulty here is if you're able to read it. So I, I am, I can see that um, they both like to play with Lego. Yeah, at Lego table. So and it does show us our preferences. Also shows friendship between Logan and Naomi. Yeah. So and uh, you can see that they made Lego creation, and that looks like cars. Yeah. So that gives us enough information, and it also shows that they were quite uh, involved in playing, concentrated for forty-five minutes. So this jotting, the difficulty is in unpacking the. Um, learning without context, but you also can see that it does capture some important information. Okay. Let's practice now. Oops. Let's practice now. It's supposed to work. Children playing with trucks.
You like that too? How about you have this one? It's a big four wheel drive. Wow. to make some jottings and write or capture some actions and child's words. I also wonder how did you find that it was um, a group of children? So how uh, did you write these observations? How did you make jottings? This really helps you to see how difficult is early childhood profession and how hard it is to supervise children and also make observations at the same time. So, for example, you could write something like children are playing with trucks, yeah, uh, and there is a sensory area plus imaginative play where educator is sitting down with a group of children and one younger child is uh, sitting on her lap. Uh, Andre, uh, one of the child in the cowboy hat, is interested in a red shiny truck, yeah, and he thinks it is shiny and hence new. He likes the red shiny truck. He also is interested in um, uh, interacting with the camera because you could see that he was pushing the truck towards the camera. I also captured that he was very interested. I was focusing on Andre. Uh, he was interested in a little child. So he was saying, hello, baby. Hey, baby. Uh, and he shared a car with the baby. So that really shows us his uh, social interactions. Uh, I also remember that he was uh, jumping in this, uh, well, sandpit or uh, imaginative play with soil and cars. An educator told him that, I uh, remember what she said, that it's only for cars, it's not very stable. There was a little girl I made jottings about. So uh, she was in yellow t-shirt and she was involved in sensory play and she wanted to try to taste the soil. So sensory play is the key and she found this texture of the new soil fascinating. So this was overall a, quite an engaging place. So if I would make jottings, I definitely mentioned that it was 
uh, popular among children. So it is worth um, reflecting on and thinking uh, more about how we can extend on it and what concepts we can introduce. For example, uh, some children were playing uh, rolling up and down the ramps where we can add more ramps. Yeah. So think about it. So what uh, jottings did you do? Post in the comments below under this video. Uh, we also can uh, use a little bit of analysis, which is I call so what part. If you think about what is happening is when we write jottings. So what is the next stage? So what do you see? So I kind of included a little bit of analysis in the um, previous uh, video uh, uh, on trucks. And uh, you could see that um, uh, it's a lot of interesting uh, things to notice yeah but um, this part of uh, our job uh, in writing observations is very important and definitely deserves a separate video when you are uh, focusing on analysis you need to review the jottings uh, you took during the observation you need to identify the most significant moments uh, and describe the learning that happened, which could be a little bit difficult because uh, jottings could be brief. Yeah? Linking them to farm domains of development or holistic learning uh, could be a little bit uh, challenging, but you could see looking at the video about trucks that children demonstrated interest and engagement in play, which is one of the dispositions. You also could see uh, how some of them are squatting down, how some of them jumping in and out of this uh, imaginative play area, how some of them are looking for comfort from the educator. So this shows us physical development. Uh, also, the child who is involved in sensory play, also at sensory motor stage, according to Piaget. Think about theories you can link it to. In terms of collaborative learning and Vygotsky, I'll let you think, right? So also you can think about schema and Piaget theory. For example, are children applying any urges of play or schema schematas here, uh, such as transport, uh, transportation, such as uh, um, enveloping or any other uh, schemes? So, um, yeah, try, and uh, this will um, take it to the next level. Reflect on your experience with jottings overall. Try to make, over the next few days, a few jottings, and uh, think about how you feel about it. Did it uh, simplify your life as an educator? Did it improve your capturing uh, of learning? Uh, what about recording? Which way of recording did you find the best and easiest? Uh, was it um, uh, something that you struggled with and what did you learn from this exercise? So I want you to share it with me in our community, StoryKate community, and comment under this video. What do you think about jottings? Post any questions and comments and ask me if you want to make video on other forms of observations. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.